about the freshman. What I love about Ava Brown is she is not afraid to throw her off speed early and often. She's going to throw in the mid-60s and spins the ball very well, so you can look for some deception. Some struggles this year for Stetson. They come in at 9-15. and 15. You look at the overall numbers, 232 team average. We talked about Sinaraki. She'll hit second. Addison Foster will lead off. We'll see what kind of production they can get under Shelly Cousins. This is her third season as the head coach in DeLand, Florida, one of the younger head coaches in the country. So we get set to get underway here on this Wednesday midweek. Gators full week outside of SEC play. Stetson has yet to begin a sun play. First pitch to Foster is high. We're underway right on time, 6.02 p.m. Eastern. Jeremy Otter, our entire crew for the SEC Network here today alongside the All-American National Champion, Alicia Ocasio. I'm Kyle Crooks. Home plate umpire is Jill Poole. James Colsey, who was in Tuscaloosa this weekend, He's at first, Anthony Small, who I always say it is anything but small. He's a big guy over at third. He lifts some weights over there. You know what's funny? I used to have him as an umpire when I was eight years old, so really? I've known him for a long time. <laughs> Familiar faces. Love to see it. Blue shirts tonight. Ava Brown's been so good, a part of the two freshman stars for the Gators. Next to Foster is taken low. Ball four, four straight out of the zone, Alicia. And sometimes it takes a little bit to get your footing, but that, what's your, that's what your pregame bullpen is for, but you know, not uncommon to see. You can expect her to come back with a strike here. That's what it's all about. Did see Gator pitchers at times in Tuscaloosa fall behind in the count, even in that win against Alabama, tied a season worst, three walks did Ava Brown. Bunt laid down, foul by Madeline Sinaraki. Something to look at throughout the night for Stetson. Alicia, they've stolen 53 bases. That far and away leads the ace sun. That's 14th nationally. They will sacrifice runners over. They have 16 successful sacrifices this year. Runner takes off. Erickson right on target. Oh, she's lethal behind home plate. That's her eighth. Base runner caught this year. And Jocelyn Erickson, such a cannon behind the plate. You see here such a quick pop time. It wasn't even close for Foster to get to second base. Foster was 15 of 16. It's the second time caught all year. And Erickson is in a class of her own. Next fouled off, according to Tim Walton. There's certain things you can't teach. There's been some great defensive catchers in Florida's past, but in terms of throwing out base runners, Jocelyn Erickson is right at the top. 1-2 oh, coming. Joss missed. And that, was, that was a courageous steal by Foster, but you've got to do it. You've got to run her on. And I'm surprised that Sinaraki didn't get that butt down. Try to get a runner in scoring position, especially with a team like Florida. Well, another three ball count here. Three and two now. The Sinaraki team's leader in batting average at 354 is driven in 10 this year. Ava Brown coming off her second SEC freshman of the week. National freshman of the week as well, according to D1 softball. Check swing roller just fell. Take a look at first, and Erickson behind the plate. Gales will be in that flex spot, so she won't hit. She'll just play defensively with Ava Brown in the circle as a two-way player. And I love two-way players. I'd say so. <laughs> You're a pretty good one yourself. Another payoff pitch coming to Sinaraki. That hit her. Back-to-back -back three passes here. Gator fans saying that she leaned out. She has nine stolen bases this year. We'll see how aggressive they get after that caught stealing of Foster. And I know that one hurt. I didn't see Sinaraki over there with an Evo shield. Her elbow's already getting a little bit red. So I know she's going to feel that one later. Oof. Right it's actually her forearm. forearm yeah. yeah. Is that hurt still, though, right on that forearm? Oh, tremendously. <laughs> I never, you know, you never like to get hit. She, she did attempt to lean out, but that is her box, so she's granted first base. 
All right, Chelsea Dobbins is going to come out here after ball one delivered to Cami Epley. What do you think that conversation is right now? I'm sure it's pretty obvious because everything seems to be going wayward for Ava Brown. As you see, Chelsea Dobbins' first year as pitching coach. I mean, not often, but I'm sure you've had starts to games inside the circle where things weren't going well. What, what goes through your mind in, in that point in time? I think sometimes, you know, nerves get the best of you, but I think of that pressure being on the mound, starting a game as a privilege. So I, I can assume that Coach Dobbins is just trying to calm her down, kind of telling her to find her heartbeat, not get too riled up right now and stick to her game. She just came off of a tremendous week. And freshman of the week and NFCA freshman of the week. So to just trust her stuff. You see Chelsea Dobbins. Formerly North Carolina Tar Heels since 2015, was associate head coach, former assistant at Marshall. Already two base runners in this inning, a caught stealing of Foster. And a 1 0 count here to Cami Epley, hitting over 300. Homer 15 driven in. And takes a strike. You also have to give credit to the defense. You have a lefty catcher in Erickson and also had a lefty hitter in Sinaraki. So you really have to depend on your defense to let you know that the runner is stealing because as a catcher with a lefty hitter, you're not able to see the runner as easily as you would with a righty hitter. Let me ask you, I mean, you had Janelle Wheaton, who was a lefty catcher. I did. You, you, <laughs> you like that, though. I love that. I love that as a pitcher trying to paint that outside corner to lefty batters, I'm sorry, to righty batters. I love her glove being on the opposite hand so she's able to take that ball and bring it back in with ease, tricking the umpire even when it's not necessarily <laughs> always a strike. Two balls, two strikes. Jacksonville, Florida native. Here it comes. Epley stays alive. Gators defensively as a whole. You see some shifting and shaking like we showed you moments ago in the infield. With Walsh at third, McClellan at second to get her bat in the lineup. But it's been the second best fielding percentage team in the country, 985. 2-2 two -two on its way. Roll to the right side. Base hit. Stopping at second base. And as Sinaraki stops at second, first and second now with one out. Not hit terribly hard through that right side. And first hit for Stetson. And Epley doing a really good job on this pitch that's low and away from her to drive in in the 3 4 hole you see right here. She's almost golfing the ball, but just enough to get it past first and second base. Here's Annabella McLaren. Ball one. And you know, Kyle, I can't help but to think about what could have been if Foster hadn't stole yeah. and gotten caught by Erickson would have had potentially, you know, bases loaded or even a, a run with the Hatters. Timeout. Let me ask you this. Emotional series over a three-game set. You played in a whole bunch of them, and now you have to throttle down for a midweek. Is there anything to that mentally? As a team snap toss to first, just back in time is Epley. I like it. <laughs> I like that. Um, but, you know, absolutely any game, you step on the field, there's always going to be some sort of nerves. We talked about it as you see the throw here. We just talk about how great her arm is. I'm sure we'll see more of that, but anytime you step on the field, you got to bring your A game. I think that's what it's about. Right? That's why you go to Florida to play some great softball, but this is really a time to hone in on your pitches and kind of fix some things that maybe weren't working over the weekend or perfect some of your pitches that maybe didn't feel the greatest. 2-1 to McLaren. Pop foul. First time these freshmen stepped on the field for the Gators it was on that Saturday in Tuscaloosa. It was a program record 4,400 fans there that day. You saw 4,000 the next. And we all know the environment in the Rhodes House. The Gators getting a chance to get back home. Just outside, another three ball count. And the Rhodes House is one of the toughest stadiums to play in, in my opinion, because you do have fans surrounding you, not only 
behind home plate, but also in the berm. Claren waits on it, fouls it back, stays alive. And for Stetson, meanwhile, this is their fifth ranked opponent of the year. They're coming off a series victory against Robert Morris at home. Their low loss in extra innings was a loss in nine. Started their season on a six game losing streak. Played the likes of Washington, Oklahoma State, Tennessee, UCF. Payoff is inside, misses for ball four. Now the bases are loaded. The lone out in this inning, a caught stealing at second. So you've had three free passes and a single in this inning. Base is loaded, one out. See Skyler talking to Ava. And it just shows the leadership that she has. And coming into the circle, speaking some gospel into the freshman. Here's Laith Freeman. Transfer from Presbyterian. Hits in three of her last four. Hoist one in the air, this should get a run in. Kissler with the shades on towards the line, makes the catch. Tagging from third is Sinarecki, and she will score. And Stetson takes the lead. Here in the first inning, sack fly from Leith Freeman. You now five RBI on the year, it's one nothing Hatters. I just love the fight that the Hatters have had. They just look comfortable at the plate, this curveball by Ava Brown. Freeman just takes it to right field. Puts a good bat on it to get the Hatters their first run of this game. And still runners in scoring position. Yeah, all runners move up. Epley to third, McLaren to second. Here's now Brianna Robert Robinson takes ball one. Stetson has yet to win a true road game this year. Nine and 15. Under a young head coach. One and one. And I love moments like these. And you know, I, I don't want, <laughs> if I had my choice, I don't want anyone to lose. But as a pitcher, you need moments like these, especially as a freshman, to help shape your character and who you are on the mound. When you're facing adversity, who are you? How do you come back from that? How do you adjust? So I think moments like these are crucial in the development of a pitcher and ultimately a team. Face some of that adversity in that Sunday start against Alabama. What was the Wacky third inning. Change up, rolled to Wallace on two bent knees, across the diamond for the final out. But Stetson, to the career start, has faced the Gators multiple times in her career, including last season. Went three and a third, allowed six earned runs. 2022 went the distance, allowing seven earned runs. Here's Kendra Falby hitting 453. One constant, that's Falby at the top. Lays down a drag bunt to third. Napoli across, they just got her. Boy, that's a tough task, and they just got Falby. And like you said, a tough task with Falby's speed, but I think this bunt just hit a little bit too hard. A really close play. But she managed to get her out at first. Take another look at this. Mm. Looks to be right. Yep. Here's Skylar Wallace. Had an up and down series in her return to Tuscaloosa. I'm sure a lot of emotions for her. Spent two seasons as a member of the Alabama Crimson Tide, but was excited to be back. Maybe some nerves to start the series. 1-0 on its way. And the pressure that Alicia, I'm sure she puts on herself after what was almost Video game numbers last year, SEC Player of the Year, trying to provide an encore performance to that. Well, she did have amazing numbers last year, but I think, you know, if I'm Skylar Wallace, I'm not trying to have video game numbers. Again, I'm just taking it one pitch at a time, and really the encore should be bringing the Gators to the Women's College World Series. 2-1, hoisted, shallow right center. It's Danger, drops in for a base hit. Just a floating ball, found no man's land in that sunlight, which I'm sure did not help Sinaraki, the second baseman. And Wallace reaches with one. Also a big difference this year, the protection behind Skylar Wallace. Wallace takes off, first pitch, slides in, head first, they got her. Freeman 
Return serve to Erickson, who threw out a runner in the top of the first. Tim Walton not wasting any time. He wants to head to the monitor here. Wow, and Freeman with a sack fly last inning and showcasing her arm this inning. Mm, it's a think, really close play. I think that's probably not going to change. That throw was so perfect from Freeman. Almost on the back of Wallace, and it was caught while the glove was almost already on her back. Got to have indisputable video evidence. That's your normal disclaimer you have for every replay. And what's interesting is Freeman has only thrown out one runner all year, so the Gators know that they're going to be pretty aggressive. Opponents 12 of 13 against her in stolen bases. So they're going to take a look at this as will you at home. Super slow-mo. Uh, from this angle, I, it looks like she got her hand in there. I'm probably going to go against you there, Alicia. I think tags right there. there. Tags right there. Yep. Uh, I'm glad I'm not an umpire. <laughs> I think everybody's grateful for that. And you know what? Tag. There you go. You're right. I think that's <laughs> the look that might do it. I, I think. But again, is it indisputable enough as you slow it down frame by frame to overturn it? Still? Out. Freeman's just second caught stealing. First time Wallace has been caught. Again, I think it. If it was called safe on the field, I think it stays there. I think there's just not enough video evidence to overturn the call. I agree. I agree. But what a big out by Freeman behind the plate to get the best player in the SEC in 2023 and arguably now out at second base to send a message. 0-1 oh, to Otis. Drives one to center field. Over the head of Epley and up against the wall. Corby Otis into second for the two-out double. And how big does that caught stealing now loom? That would have been a tie game after that swing. It absolutely would have been with the runner on second, but this pitch just coming a little bit too far in on that backdoor curve for Otis to just drive this to, to left center field. But I also think Epley didn't get a great jump on this ball, took an angle towards left center field. If she would have gone straight back, I think she had a better chance to catch this ball. Nobody better to have up right now than the SEC's RBI leader, Jocelyn Erickson. Also leads the league in batting average at 471. Tim Walton warned everybody in the preseason, I'm telling you, she's the best hitter most likely that we're going to have this year on a consistent basis. And that's a team with Skylar Wallace on it. That's pole scary. To pole power, yeah. <laughs> the 0-1, change up a little bit low. You know, I, we talked about this earlier, but I think what makes her so good, she's getting pitched a lot on the outside corner, but she just drives those pitches to left center field. I was looking at her her heat maps and her, her spray charts, and she's hit most of her hits to left center and through the middle of the field. And Tim Walton, he said, I'm really excited for the season that Jocelyn Erickson's going to have. It was one of the first words out of his mouth when I saw him for the first time in, in a while, spring practice. Just the excitement around her. 2-1 coming. Change up right down center, keeping her off balance, 2-2. Two and two. And he was almost, you know, happy. <laughs> Not necessarily happy, but, you know, he, he just felt like Jocelyn Erickson was a secret weapon in a way with her not being picked in the SEC preseason poll. 2-2 two, two coming. Rolled over, finds room in a right field. Otis with two outs, running all the way. The throw is wide. There's another ribby for Johnson Erickson. SEC leading 36th. The Gators tie the game at one. Johnson Erickson doing what Johnson Erickson does, taking this pitch on the outer half and driving it right here in the 3-4 hole for Otis to score the Gators' first RBI. Now the game's tied. Could have been two. Yeah, how but. big is that <laughs> caught stealing? We continue to say it. And here's now Ava Brown, the reigning SEC Freshman of the Week, National Freshman of the Week. On and on we go. And we talked about the protection that they have in this lineup. You just had Erickson 
hit that single, RBI single, but now you have Ava Brown who's coming off of a 500 weekend, going four for eight with four RBIs. 1-0. There's that off speed again, one and one. Gators have had one of their three freshman pitchers win the SEC Freshman of the Week every week to start the year. They've won it five times. Rothrock twice, Brown twice, Olivia Miller once when she threw a perfect game against Bethune-Cookman. And I'll tell you what, that is extremely impressive. As a pitcher, as someone who you know came up through the Gators program, it is so tough to come into a program with no upperclassmen or vets who have been there to kind of guide you through their experience and the knowledge that they've had throughout their career. So for them to come out and just really put the pedal to the metal is extremely impressive to watch. Ava Brown hitting a moonshot home run in that Alabama series. Stellar in the circle in game two. And Jocelyn Erickson just continues to be just like the person to her left, Cheryl Heckles. Two great hitters over at first. Cheryl now a student assistant. 3-1, plate word. Popped up. Hobbs screams ball, ball, ball. She's got it. So Lauren Hobbs gets out of trouble. Minimal damage in the inning. A run on three hits. And Gianna Niemeyer is going to lead off here for Stetson in the second. Gators busy week. They'll have Mercer and Indiana in town over the weekend. Off week from SEC play. And following that, Gators will have Kentucky come into town. Then you really start rolling into the heart of Southeastern Conference play. There's still a whole host of teams that did not play conference games in the SEC opening weekend. Niemeyer swings through strike two. Look at the rankings. You got LSU near the top in the country at number two. They beat Texas yesterday. You got Georgia, Tennessee, Florida, all in the top 10 in the latest poll. LSU has been really impressive to watch, being the only team in the country who's gone undefeated thus far. See a lot of, uh, a lot of, you know, they're shaking stuff up, I guess you could say. Yeah. <laughs> a really good win yesterday. 0-2 oh, swung through for strike three. Ava Brown goes to that changeup, and there's one out. And I love to see it after that last inning, getting behind, but coming back right now with the strikeout to start the inning with her off-speed pitch. We talked about how deceptive her spins are. She's gonna be successful when she uses that off-speed early and often. Here's Yvette Morgan, look out. And that Stetson dugout. Transfer from Chipola College here in the state. Last year broke up Lexi Delbray's no-hitter. She was one out away for a no-hitter in DeLand in the seventh, and it was Morgan who hit a home run with two outs and spoiled the party. It's a heartbreaker. She's off to a 278 start, no homers, seven runs driven in. Oh. Dribbler to Walsh at third, throws it across for the out. How about Reagan Walsh, too? You can highlight her. Played just about every game at second base last year, and now just to get in the lineup, whether it's designated player, that's where you're going to see her most. And Mia Williams came in as a freshman phenom. She's seen the bulk of starts at second, so Reagan Walsh finding ways to get in the lineup, playing at the hot corner for the seventh time this year. And I think you can just speak to her athleticism when you talk about how many positions that she can play and really just be a lead at. We talked about second base, third base. I think she's even had a start in the outfield. Correct me if I'm wrong. But that just goes to show like her discipline and, and taking reps at multiple positions and just doing it well. And Walsh off to a good start offensively. He's hit six home runs. It's tied for a team best. So he ain't sitting her down, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. And I'll tell this to every young athlete, if you can hit, coach is going to find a way for you to be in that lineup. Two and one to Napoli. Gia Napoli, the number nine hitter. Brown, nice bounce back inning. 
After a frame in the first, she issued three free passes, two walks and a hit by pitch. Strikeout, ground out, and the 3-1. Ball four. Third walk in this start, so that ties a season high for Ava Brown. And we're just an inning and two thirds in. You know, we, we spoke about it before. Sometimes it just takes a little bit to find your footing on the mound coming into the game fresh, but a really good at bat, good eyes by Napoli. Just being patient, that's what her job is as a nine hole hitter to turn the lineup over. Here's Addison Foster, start of the party in the first with a four pitch walk, and then that party was ruined. Jocelyn Erickson flipped over the punch ball of that party as she threw around at second base. That's the eighth base dealer that has been caught this year from the lefty Gator catcher. Slapped to third, stays fair for Walsh. Now they say foul as Jill Poole, home plate umpire. So instead of the end of the inning, it's an 0-2 count. Originally looked like it was fair. And a play like that, you just have to play out. It starts fair, but I think has a little bit of tail, catches it on the other side of the line. Also that foot's got to stay in the box. Can't have a toe out. Can't have a, anything out, can't have a nail out. Yeah. <laughs> or else you're automatically out. If we, the umpire sees it, of course. We've seen those calls go down drastically the last few years as the slappers make their adjustments. Ball and two strikes. Strike three, Foster goes down looking. Second strikeout for Ava Brown and two in the inning, so puts up a zero. Stetson, peace, both sides in that first. Reagan Walsh will lead it off. Cassidy McClellan, Bailey Goddard against the lefty Lauren Hobbs who deals strike one. Reagan Walsh, we mentioned, great start to her year. Tied for a team best, six home runs. 22 RBI, 365 average. Part of that protection from that top four in the lineup. You got somebody with the upside of Reagan Walsh hitting sixth. That's pretty good. Very deep lineup, one through nine. Hobbs 0-2. Change up. Floated to right center. Long run for Epley. Makes the catch. I love how Hobbs just establishes that outer corner with her Backdoor curve, getting Reagan Walsh to chase on that pitch low and out after throwing two straight strikes on the corner. Hobbs pitched against Tennessee earlier this year, allowed eight or runs in four and a third innings. Also went up against Oklahoma State. Here's Cassidy McClellan. Seeing back-to-back -back starts as a freshman, her first career start at second base. Gators looking to get her bat in the lineup. She's been really impressive in the short amount of time that well, she's had some run. And for McClellan, you go back to Monday night. A big spot, Gators try to mount a seventh inning rally against Alabama. And she worked a nine pitch at bat for a walk. To load the bases and send the go ahead run to the plate. And I just love that, especially for a freshman, but for any softball player to run up a count to eight pitches and draw a walk that takes such discipline and not only that, but such grit to be able to have some great eyes to lay off and draw that walk for your team. Takes ball four, four pitch walk to McClellan. Gators have a one out base runner. The issue over the weekend was Caleb Beaver, the Central Arkansas transfer now pitching for the Tide. Gators hit just 163 against her. On a 2-0 game in the opener and then fell to her 3-0. It was the second time the Gators have been shut out all year. As they enter tonight, the nation's best scoring offense in runs per game. I want to know to Bailey Goddard. Goddard, another one of those players that Tim Walton just trying to find ways to get her in the lineup. Designated player spot tonight with Walsh moving to third. 
And that's such a great problem to have when you have so many great players and you're so deep offensively. For a coach to make a lineup can be a tough thing. I spoke to Coach Eric Thomas in the fall and asked how the team was doing, especially with the number one recruiting class coming in. And he said it's going to be so hard to create a lineup for this team. Meeting inside the circle, pitching coach Becca Taylor having a conversation with Lauren Hobbs going over that scouting report of Goddard. It's a young coaching staff. Head coach Shelly Cousins, third season. Won 12 games in the A-Sun last year. It's a 500 record. Shelly Cousins herself, former All-American, two-time A-Sun player of the year. Got the job when she was 28 years old. It's really young to be a Division I head coach. Now you don't see that often. More power to her. Congratulations for being such a young coach in this game. Goddard gets hit. She leads the team in being plunked. Goddard, that's the seventh time she's been hit this season. You can see here... Bailey is over that line. Anything that comes into her box will grant her first base because it is the batter's box. And once you reach out and cross that line, then it becomes a gray, gray area for the umpire to possibly call you back. And we've seen that at times this year. Here's Katie Kissler in the nine spot, getting the start and right. First and second with one out. So no toes, like we mentioned earlier, yeah. no elbows out the box. Keep your elbows in the box, people. <laughs> Tenth batter hit this year by Hobbs. It's the highest on the staff. The lefties next. Line sharply to right center field. That'll get to the track and to the wall. Should bring in two. McClellan around third. Goddard right behind her. A two-run double for Katie Kissler. And the Gators a 3-1 lead. And big time players come up in big time moments. This pitch low and out. But Kissler takes it to right center field. Higging that leg into the ground to get under it. Giving her two RBIs to lead the Gators up 3-1 to one over the Hatters. See the energy that she's giving her teammates. I just love to see it. RBI 19 and 20 for Kistler. That's such an important area in this lineup, that nine spot. Falvey rolls this over, drawn in second baseman. Sinaraki throws on to first. Effective out down to third is Kistler. Read by Tim Walton. That's the second out of the inning as Falvey now 0 for 2. And a productive out by Falby, but a really athletic play by Sinaraki at second base to drop step and give herself some space to get that out and not let herself get eaten up by that ball. Chance for a two-out ribby for Wallace. Got a single her first time. The pitch from Hobbs almost wayward, 1-0. You talk about that sun that you can see from center field and right field. I can't say that I loved playing out there whenever <laughs> the sun was out, but definitely a tough Tough sight to see the ball whenever it's in the air. 1-0 foul back. He just had daylight savings time, too, so that sun's sticking sun. around a little bit longer. <laughs> see if she tries to hit it over there again. Wallace hit a floating single to right center her first time. Average now at 464. Awaits on the 1-1. Lofts one, shallow left, dropping fast, fair ball. Kistler scores, Wallace running all the way for one scoring double. Back to back. Should say two of the last three batters. Doubles for the Gators and Wallace an RBI. And it's now 4-1 Florida. And she does what she can with this pitch that's tailing away from her. Got under it just a hair as you can see. But just enough to get a double out of that. Where McLaren can't get her glove on it or her hand, and Skylar Wallace takes advantage, getting another RBI for the Gators. Two outs, runners in scoring position. That's a difference, difference maker in conference games as Otis takes high and in. 
Usually you're used to Wallace kind of hitting the cover off the ball. Those two hits, just floating balls, one to left, one to shallow right center. Just finding green grass. And you know what? You can't see that in the scorebook either. That's right. <laughs> you only see what base she gets. She's done her job. That's the third Gator double in two innings. Otis doubled her first time, came around to score with two outs on that Erickson RBI single to right. 2-0 to her. Change up low. First three out of the zone to the All-American Corby Otis. She won an SEC Player of the Week to start the month. It was a great performance out west for her. Red light does take a strike, outer edge. Made her SEC debut, hits in the final two games of that Alabama series. Just off the inside corner. Gators two on, two out. And this is the last person Lauren Hobbs wants to see. That's Jocelyn Erickson. I thought that was a, a pretty good pitch, maybe a little bit high for Hobbs on that changeup inside. We call that a pitcher's pitch, one that doesn't necessarily give the umpire an automatic green light to call, but one that we think has a really good chance, especially with an offense like the Gators. Uh, you know, your pitcher, as a pitcher, you want that call. All right, how do you pitch Jocelyn Erickson here? Two outs to even throw her a strike. Well, you know, I... I <laughs> I spoke about her scouting a little bit earlier and in, in using 6-4-3 charts, and she has a lot of rollover ground balls to second base, so I probably would try to jam her late, get her to roll over on something. She does have most of her hits to left center field and up the middle. She does hit that outside ball very well, so just not giving her anything to hit. High fly ball, right field, has some carry. Robinson back to the track, has room. Boy, that was an effortless here in Gainesville year-round. I would never leave. I, I would have stayed here after I graduated as well. <laughs> You're still living pretty close. Small drive. First pitch, Madeline Sinaraki swings through strike one. We talked about her stats a little bit earlier. Right now, 354 in the season, but what makes her so good is her versatility. You see her standing in right now, but she also has the ability to slap and lay down a bunt. And you will see that all in one at bat. Right now standing in, trying to poke something through the infield. Leads the team in average, hits second in RBI with 10. Two. Foul back. Ava Brown got two strikeouts in the last inning. They six in the first. Got three free passes, two walks. Has issued three walks so far. That ties the season worse. So trying to get her control back a little bit. Gets the sign she wants. The 0-2 just to tat out. We talked about a pitcher's pitch last inning. That is a great pitch for Ava Brown to throw 0-2, but still has a little bit of wiggle room with the count being 1-2, being ahead. Line right to Walsh at third. Nice snag for the first out. That's why they call it the hot corner, right? <laughs> Indeed, a hot corner. Center Rocky just getting this pitch on the white. Driving it, which would have been in the 5 6 hole if Reagan Walsh didn't flash her leather on that last play. But such an athletic play, having to go to her left side and drop a knee to make that out. Brings in Cami Epley, has the lone Stetson hit. A little bleeding ground ball through the right side in the first. showing bunt, maybe trying to get on in a multitude of ways. It's a team that will win a lot of their conference games with small ball, stealing bases, bunting players over. I mentioned they only hit 232 as a team entering, but they have 16 sacrifices. 
top 15 nationally with 53 stolen bases. So they can make some noise in the A Sun. Won 12 games in the league last year. Popped up. Does this stay on the field of play? Erickson has some room for out number two. Now that brings in Annabelle McLaren. That's a tough play to make as a catcher. To turn your back, try to find that ball. Also the view of this raised press box too doesn't help. Bouncing ball over Ava Brown, Cassidy McClellan, welcome to second base. The freshman first ever start. It off for Florida, five, six, and seven. Against the veteran left-hander. Her first is down low to the young star, Ava Brown. Recalls the moment during her recruiting trip, standing inside the pitching circle inside an empty KDC Shoal Presley Stadium with Tim Walton and her family. Well, jam job flare to second, and that's out number one. Just looking around the ballpark with the lights on, and she knew that was the moment she wanted to be a Florida Gator. And this was the place that she wanted to be and create memories, maybe get to a World Series, multiple World Series, put another year up on that facility over there for a national championship, just like my broadcast partner to my right. <laughs> what was the moment that you knew that you wanted to be a Gator? Well, you know, my recruiting process was a little bit different. Uh, I committed to Florida my senior year, but I, you know, I knew it on campus. Walsh on Corks on one, has some carry to right center field to the wall, it's gone! <laughs> Robinson ran out of room and Reagan Walsh, team best seventh long ball of the year. A solo home run puts the Gators up 5-1. All smiles for the Gators team. And Reagan Walsh is just so strong. She didn't even get all of this. She pulled off of that outside backdoor curveball, but just enough to send it over the right center field fence for her seventh home run of the year, putting the Gators up five to one, securing some more insurance runs. Power to all fields. Distance on that one, 249 feet. Exit velo of 73. Matt Felicetti, who's ahead of data and analytics sitting in the other room to our right. Since you in charge it. of it all. He's got <laughs> all the numbers, all the data. He's the man. I think that's just changed the game tremendously. Clellan pops this up. Not quite 249 feet. And there's two outs. But the moment, back to, you know, this little story I had, uh, the moment I knew that I wanted to be a Gator was at lunch with Coach Rocha, Coach G, Coach Walton, and how nervous I was. I don't typically get nervous in settings like that, but in the recruiting process, I just, you know, was baffled by the resources, the facilities, and everything that Florida offered. So at that moment, I knew, kind of similar to Ava Brown's experience. But, you know, Coach Walton has been a great mentor, friend, coach, the whole nine and it's really changed my life and my career for the better. So you say it was around a, a meal that you had with them? Was it like a, a lunch or something? If you ask him, I couldn't even talk because I was so nervous. I was going to ask you what you had <laughs> to eat. Oh, we do were in remember? Gator Dining. If anybody okay. knows what training table is, we were just sitting down. I do know that. Probably yeah. eating a crab leg or something. A crab leg? <laughs> it's the singular crab leg. This one. What was your favorite meal on campus as a student here? Uh, you know what, the athlete dining, we, we just had great food in there. And we could just do grab and go, grab a yogurt, grab a treat, and there was always good food for dinner. So we were very blessed to have, you know, that resource on campus where food is provided. Blessed with unlimited yogurt. Yeah. <laughs> yogurt, crab legs. Chobani. <laughs> Chobani. Yogurt this is not choice. sponsored. 2-2 two -two to Bailey Goddard. Yikes. Second time she's been plunked.
So home run in the inning here from Reagan Walsh. Made it 5-1 Gators, five runs on six hits. That's the 11th batter hit this year from Hobbs. And Hobbs' curveball just breaks so much, and this time a little bit too much. Kind of gets the hip of Bailey Goddard. Second hit by pitch, but hey, on base percentage is going up. Runner takes off. Freeman gets tested again. This time, it's a successful stolen base. Bailey Goddard slides in. She's now two of two on the year. And I spoke about it a little bit earlier. Bailey Goddard just <laughs> being so versatile. You don't necessarily see her stealing often, but gets a job done to get another Gator in scoring position. 12th career stolen base for her. That's the second this year. Two balls, no strikes to Katie Kistler. Did she go around on the changeup? No, says Anthony Small. Kistler a cornerstone to what is, I would say, not that anybody cares about my opinion, but <laughs> one of the best defensive outfields in the country. With Otis in left, Falby in center, and Kistler in right. There's not a whole lot that's going to get past him. Four-pitch walk to Kistler, turns the lineup over for Kendra Falby looking for her first hit. And Hobbs in a world of hurt here. Kayla Hill only has 7.1 innings on the year as opposed to Hobbs' 64.1 innings. But she's going to show a different look, throw a little bit harder, but also throw a curveball in there with her backdoor changeup. Kind of hit more quadrants going high with her rise ball as well. So you'll see a different look even though she's still from the left side. Ball be over first two. Grounded to third, grounded to second. She's had such a good start to her year. And if the Gators make it to Oklahoma City, she's gonna be a big reason why. Setting the table for the big bats behind her and Wallace, Otis, and Erickson. Lefty Mullen comes set, 1-1. One, one. Spoil foul. First appearance for Caitlin Mullen since March 2nd against Longwood went just a third of an inning like Alicia highlighted, just seven and a third innings. And has pitched to a 2.86 ERA. Falby swings, cracks a line drive to left field. McLaren back goes over her head up against the wall. This will bring in two more. Goddard in, Kistler as well. A two-run double for Falby. And it's now 7-1 Florida. That's what's so beautiful about having so many tools. Kendra Falby standing in, going after this pitch that's elevated in the zone over the head of McLellan. What a great play off the wall, but not quick enough to get this ball overhead. Two RBIs for Kendra Falby. So another extra base hit in this inning, which Gators had a one out home run from Walsh. Florida now has four doubles. Total of five extra base hits. Here's now Wallace, who's two for two. A chance for another two out RBI. And takes a strike. What's so tough about Kendra Falby in her last, now three at bats, her first two she slapped away, bunted a little bit, but then she went to standing in. And that's hard to defend when you're looking for a slap from someone like Kendra Falby who does that predominantly. Now showing that versatility that we saw you know, a lot her freshman year, the ability to stand in, slap, power slap. Just gives you more, more tools, and uh, I know you've heard this this quote before, but speed never slumps, especially mm. when you have so many different tools. One, two coming, change up, rolled over, past the glove of Niemeyer, that's fielded by Sinaraki, and nobody was at first. Got past the first baseman, Niemeyer. Sinaraki had nowhere to go with it, nobody at the bag, so that should be an infield hit for Wallace. 
And now runners out the corners. Skyler Wallace just takes this pitch on the outer corner and just drives it to first base. We have a, dive, a diving Niemeyer who just can't get her glove on it. Now first and third for the Gators. It's actually Yvette Morgan now at second base. Runner takes off, no throw down. They snap toss to third, and Falby is back. So stolen base for Wallace. She's now 14 of 15 on the year after being caught in the first inning. First and third plays are already extremely hard to defend, but when you have the speed in Skylar Wallace and Kendra Falby at first and third, it makes it even tougher. Two zero here to Corby Otis. Three zero. Otis a double and a walk. And this has been an issue with Stetson pitching this year. High walk totals. Really from their two pitchers that have pitched the majority of the innings, Hannah Marine and Lauren Hobbs. Room service strike three and one. And it's, it's tough. You, you spoke on it earlier about this lineup just protecting each other. It's, it was 3-0, but Mullen almost has to go after Otis. One, because you have runners in scoring position, but you also have Erickson right behind her. Five-pitch walk to Otis. Second free pass issued to her. She's been on base all three trips to the plate tonight. That last pitch looked like it missed down the middle, in my opinion. <laughs> Again, this is where nightmares are made here if you're a young pitcher. Bases loaded. 7-1 game, Jocelyn Erickson comes to the plate. You do have the advantage, I guess, of left on left here. Erickson just missed a home run, her last at bat RBI single in the first. Here takes just a little bit out. Ball one. That's tough, it's almost as if Mullen has to reestablish the strike zone to see what the umpire is going to call for her because those last two pitches, the walk to Otis in this last pitch, were two great pitches, in my opinion. Erickson goes around. That's a sword right there. You spoke on this lefty-lefty matchup. You had Hobbs pitch to Erickson last time on a missed home run. She went after her with an off speed and kind of jammed her a little bit on that pitch to right field. Awaits on the 1 1, change up outside. Lefty catcher, play some first base this year. Jocelyn Erickson. Tim Walton said she's probably going to be one of the best defensive first basemen in the country, but they want to keep her behind home plate. Meanwhile, Tim Walton having a conversation with Anthony Small. Did Tim Walton just get thrown out? Or it's. That's the end of the inning. We'll have to get some clarification on what exactly happened. With the Gators having bases loaded. This one's lined to left field, drops down for a base hit. Late Freeman who had the sack fly in the first. Has Stetson's second hit. So what do you think of that call, Alicia? That that is a in my opinion a, a wonky call with bases loaded. Uh, you don't necessarily see that often unless a runner is taking the next base. Meanwhile, I believe we're going to have a pinch runner over at first. Would have given the Gators an opportunity to, to break the game open and... and Sit in run rule territory with the score being 7 1 in the top of the fourth. Michelle DePuma is now running at first for Stetson. Now, Brown has a lot of cushion to work with here. Six run lead, approaching pitch 60. 
She settled in, faced the minimum in the third inning. And 2-0, this is a lot of what we saw in the first. Up and down start for Ava. Trying to find her footing. Four straight out of the zone. So Stetson trying to get something cooking here in the top of the fourth inning. First almost, and second, nobody out. It almost feels as if the strike zone has gotten a little bit smaller. I'm seeing a lot of great pitches by both pitchers on the Hatters and the Gators that are not getting called. And granted, the, the strike zone is set, but it's also subjective, can change umpire to umpire, but also inning to inning. And if, <laughs> if you really want to get into it, it can change amidst and at bat. It's just how the game is. Here's Jayla Haynes, who is hitting in the seventh spot for Niemeyer. From nearby Ocala, Florida. <laughs> Fouls this back. I just love the grit from Stetson right now. Down seven to one, but you wouldn't be able to tell with how many hacks they've been taking and just their grit right now. You can see Jayla's confidence in the box as she steps in. Lays down a bunt. Reagan Walsh charging in, bare hands. Throws over to the bag. Second baseman McClellan's covering. Successful sacrifice, 17th of the year for Stetson as a team. The out goes five to four. And both runners move up, second and third. And that's the the key to the game, right? Get them on, get them over, get them in. And Haynes does a great job at executing that sacrifice bunt to move him over. Now two runners in scoring position. Now here's Yvette Morgan. Originally was listed in the starting lineup as DP, playing second base now. It's jam foul. How about Stetson coming in 9 and 15? They've had a rugged schedule. Washington, Oklahoma State, Tennessee, UCF. First of two games this year between these two. Infield in on the 1 1. Loop to the right side. That'll bring it to Puma as she scores RBI single. For Yvette Morgan, it's now 7 2. Runners at the corners, one out. Really great execution by the Hatters. You've had two runners on first and second. Jayla Haynes coming in with the beautiful sacrifice bunt. And that was just textbooks. And runners on first and third. You can see Skylar Wallace pinched up the middle a little bit, prepared for whatever play might come if the runner chooses to steal, but with Skylar Wallace pinched up the middle. It pulls Reagan Walsh into the 5-6 hole to be able to account for some of those balls that Skylar Wallace might not be able to get to since she is so close to second base. Gia Napoli takes high, 2-1. Popped up. Wallace long run. Runs out of room. That last time out with the infielders, as you expressed, was just a regroup, refocus timeout. Sometimes you need a little pick me up from your teammates, from the vets on your team to calm you down and refocus you a little bit. 2 2, strike three. Ava Brown gets a big strikeout. That's her third of the night. Now two on and two out. So the lineup turns over here for Addison Foster. She indeed was refocused with this rise ball on the outer corner. She just checks swings at it. I think regardless, it would have been a great pitch. But a really great comeback at bat for Ava Brown. I got, I got those same Jordans as coach, by the way. <laughs> 
Addison Foster takes a strike. What were they? Uh, blue, blue four cements. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's got a whole he's variety a, of them. In he's his a closet. shoe head, yep. as they say. <laughs> One strike pitch, served on a line foul. Top of the Stetson lineup here with Foster. Who's 0 for 1, did walk, struck out looking, was the second strikeout victim of Ava Brown, who's found herself in some trouble here with runners at the corners, a run in on the run scoring single from Yvette Morgan. Here it comes. Line right to Reagan Walsh. A little hop, skip, and a jump to make the catch. Take away a base hit. On eight hits, Jocelyn Erickson. It's still standing there confused as to what happened in the last half frame for the Gators when they were at the plate. She had the bases loaded, and she had the bat taken out of her hands after Kendra Falby, with the bases loaded, was called for leaving early at third, which ended the inning. Meanwhile, we have Shelly Cousins in that lineup card going over things with Jill Poole, our home plate umpire. Do have some defensive changes here for Stetson. Get them to you as they come in. So I have McLaren in left, Epley in center, Robinson in right, Poli at third, Foster at short. I believe we have some changes on the right side of the infield. At first, Riley Venn is now playing. I believe Yvette Morgan is still at second. Strike one here to Jocelyn Erickson. Well, that was an unconventional call at third base for Kendra Falby leaving early, but it gave Stetson the opportunity to get back in the dugout and put another run up on the board to kind of stop the momentum of the Gators with, with bases loaded and allowed them to use that to their advantage. Caitlin Mullen goes back to work. Hobbs went two and two thirds in her start. Seven earned runs charged to her. Erickson stays alive on that off speed. Mullen with her being ahead in the count. She has a little bit of wiggle room. Already got Erickson a chase on that low off speed pitch. I'd love to see her make it dance and, and try to get Erickson a chase again. Blew it right past her. So set her up with the off speed. And Erickson goes down on strikes. Very rare sight. A very rare sight. Like you said, set her up very well. But this pitch is only 60 miles per hour. But when you have an off-speed pitch inside the pitch before, it opens up that outside corner. And it makes that pitch look a lot harder than it did. And indeed, it did look harder than it was with the swing of Erickson. So the freshman strikes out one of the best hitters in the country. And there's one out, bottom of the fourth. Little cue shot from Ava Brown on the first pitch. To Yvette Morgan, shovels on to first for out number two. Really good moments here from Stetson taking an early 1-0 lead. Fighting back in the fourth. He did leave two in that top of the fourth. We're able to get a run in. Brings in Reagan Walsh. Her last time sent one over the fence. Out in right center field. Team best seventh home run. Now he's driven in 23. It was her 21st career home run. Walsh looking to take another jump, specifically in SEC play. Go back to her freshman year, hit just 210 in conference, and then that went up about 70 points last year in the SEC. Another off speed outside, two and one. I just love the confidence that Mullen is pitching with right now, already having an inning under her belt, but very smiling, the energy's great, and she's just pitching extremely loose. Launches this down the line and left. McLaren back to the wall, leaps up. How about another for Reagan Walsh? Multi-homer performance, and another bomb from number 15. 
Another solo home run, eighth of the year. And the Gators now up 8-2. And this ball just absolutely touches the moon, elevated in the zone. Reagan Walsh doing Reagan Walsh things with her second of the day. This pitch at her letters, and she just takes this over the left field fence. And McLaren's just not able to get her glove on it. All smiles for the Florida Gators. By my account, that's her third multi-homer game of her career. Matt Felicetti coming in with all the numbers. You have came in at 61, came out at 74 miles an hour. 202, a little shorter this time. Her first one was 249. Launch angle of 44. Mm, that's good exit below in 74. She hit one over the video board in spring practice. That was fun to watch. I believe it was a home run derby with her and Alyssa Hovermill. And Walsh was able to win it. A ball that still has not landed. Went over that Presley Stadium script on the video board in left center. On pace to have a career year. There's an off speed in for a strike. I know I was giving praise to Mullen and how loose that she was right before Regan Walsh sends one deep, but you can even still see it now after that home run, and I think that shows such maturity as a freshman coming in and getting the ball knocked out the park and come back in and in the face of adversity, coming back and throwing strikes. It's tough to do, but that's the name of the game as a pitcher because you're going to face adversity, but how are you going to be resilient? How are you going to come back and get the job done? Meanwhile, Walsh has already tied her career high with eight home runs. At eight all of last year in 2023. And has hit eight already in about the opening month. And we talked about the lineup earlier, but how scary is that when you have Reagan Walsh, who was up in the lineup last year, but now you have such power and production in the middle of the lineup. can continue to fire in all cylinders offensively. It's going to be tough to be on the mound facing them. There's not a lot of lineups in the SEC that have somebody like Reagan Walsh with the numbers that she's probably going to put up this year in the sixth spot. Now that might change. You might see her as she continues to even get better move up in the lineup near cleanup. McClellan rolls this back up the middle. And in the center for a base hit. So we saw McClellan also one of those versatile pieces that can stand in and hit for power, but also that was more of a, a slap type of bat from her. Yeah, and she just took that ball right where it was pitched, right up the middle on the line. Ground ball, but I love to see it. I love when freshmen come in and make immediate impacts. It just goes to show like the grit, the competitiveness that they have. And it's her eighth career hit. Here's Goddard, who's been hit twice. I'd be all bundled up in Evo Shields if, if <laughs> I was her. And look, she is. Still managed to get hit in the hip. It's a pretty big Evo Shield on that front arm. <laughs> Got her number on it. I'd call that armor. Oof. She needs it again. <laughs> well, the argument from Caitlin Mullen is that Goddard reached out. Now Jill Poole might be saying just that here. She's halfway down the line. Nope. Oh, say clean hit by pitch. Now, do you think that arm leaned out at all? I think naturally in the start of her swing, her elbows do get a little bit in front of that line, but I don't think that she was leaning. I think she actually kind of braced herself a little bit. There definitely is a tack to it. There is. There is. And you know what? I've seen it with all the Gators today, just not being afraid of the ball coming into their wheelhouse. I mean, you got to utilize the rules. It's their box. If you get hit in your box, granted first base, and when it gets down to the wire, I know the Florida Gators, in my experience, and, and as you see it today, are, utilize those rules to their advantage. Tim Walton said about Goddard, the tone, demeanor, work ethic, really set the Gator softball standard. Katie Kistler takes low with two on and two out.
Gators with two more runs here in this inning. Can put it up in run rule territory for the top of the fifth. Good candidate here with Katie Kissler. Had a two-run double in the second and walked on four pitches in the third inning. Hitless over the weekend in Tuscaloosa. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself either, Alicia, but Gators have Kentucky. That's their next SEC series, Mississippi State, and then eventually LSU is going to come to town here in this building. Yeah, and the Gators having Kentucky, who just took three spankings from LSU, the undefeated yeah. LSU. <laughs> well, it seemed like it was all or nothing for a lot of teams this weekend. There were a handful of sweeps. I think LSU is going to do that to a lot of teams this year. Kissler unloads on a ball. Right field, it is gone. Katie Kissler, a three-run blast. Another extra base hit as Kissler rounds the bases and stumps on home plate. Gators up 11 to two. And we are now in run rule territory. Kistler just opens up her hips and drives this pitch full send in a right center field. And she gets all of this one. I love to see it. You can see it in her energy that she was itching for this hit after what you just said, Kyle, a weekend being hitless, comes out and breaks it open with the three run home run. So that'll do it for Caitlin Mullen. Fourth career home run for Katie Kistler and that's just the third home run for her of her career that has gone over the fence. She has, has had an inside the park home run in her career. Tell you about the new pitcher for Stetson, their third of the night. Gators are now, but she's coming in from the right side with a different look. Same velocity in the high 50s, low 60s, but she's going to mostly stay away from these hitters with the curve change screw and that rise ball up in the zone. Gators to the top of the lineup and Kendra Falby. Gators have hit three home runs, two from Reagan Walsh, one from Katie Kistler. This is her first multi-homer season for Kistler with her second home run. Gators have seven extra base hits. Falby pops this up, foul ground, long run for McLaren. Megan's on the weekend against Indiana on SEC Network Plus. Emily Wilkie's now doing the catching for Florida. Mia Williams is in at second. Bailey Goddard has entered into right. And Madel Madeline Sinaraki is going to take a strike going one. We'll have Indiana in the house. Exactly where Keegan Rothrock is from, her home state. That's right. Three-time Indiana Gatorade Player of the Year which is so impressive because it's already hard to clinch Gatorade Player of the Year one time, but to do it three times is... Gators had this play perfectly. Sinaraki lines out to Otis and shallow left. And two outs to play with now for Stetson. Rothrock had a 36 consecutive inning scoreless streak end against Alabama. Would have been the longest trying to get to Kelly Barnhill's 37 inning streak back in 2018. Through a complete game, one hit shutout in game one against the Tide was just the third in Florida history against Alabama of the complete game one, ha one hit shutout variety. Just the first Gator freshman to do that. Has thrown two no hitters this year through a complete game two hit shutout against the top 20 UCLA team. On and on we go. Cami Epley takes ball one. I'm talking about freshmen making such great impacts. Rothrock being one of many on this team, but really just taking charge in the circle, looking like a vet on the mound each and every time she steps on it.
Strike three, outside corner. Rothrock gets her first of this appearance, and Stetson now down to their final out. And climbs the ladder early in the count, but now goes to her screwball to paint that corner with a one-two count, just gets her to freeze. Annabella McLaren takes strike one. And Tim Walton wanting to get Rothrock some work before the weekend. Popped up. This should do it. Gills down the line. She's got it. Gators win in run rule fast.